Anyway, here we go. Eating meat, is it scriptural or not? Now, the previous author concluded, move back a little bit, Dr. Andy Alexis Baker, vegan, author and lecturer in theology and religious studies at Arupe College of Loyola, Loyola University, Chicago. He said, I did not then and do not now think I had all the answers. But when I looked at how God calls people to live, I don't think he looked in scripture for that. I knew that the arc of my life had to bend justice toward peace and toward compassion. Well, not in, not specifically in any passage in Scripture. You want to find out the issues of this, go to Paul's epistles and read how God calls people to live via the Apostle Paul or any place in the Bible. The ark of my life, whatever that is, that's not in Scripture. Bend justice. You don't bend justice. Justice is not bent. God's justice is specifically straight and narrow, and that's it. Toward peace. You can't bend justice towards peace. Sometimes there's a time to go to war. Sometimes there's a time of God's judgment. Sometimes there isn't. Sometimes there's a time of God's grace. You don't bend justice anywhere, and you don't bend it toward peace. If you make peace with your enemy by virtually capitulating to the enemy's desires, you're not doing a godly thing. And toward compassion, Sometimes judgment requires punishment. Other times judgment requires compassion. It depends. So go to Paul's epistles on this and determine that for yourself without re trying to rewrite scripture. Well, now he goes to add, including animals in that ark of compassion is something many Christians are now embracing. So you're going to go against God and say, I'm not going to do your evil thing, God. You're not having compassion on animals. You're allowing people to kill animals, not have compassion on them, and eat the animals. Okay, fine. This is not in Scripture. It's irrelevant about an ark of compassion. It's not even in Scripture. It's not what you eat. It is how you are studying and obeying Scripture by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Most likely, most of the authors mentioned are not Christian because they have not trusted alone in Christ alone for eternal life, excluding anything they might do, including what they eat. Doesn't Paul say it's not what you eat or drink? Leave the immature Christian to his own desires, don't offend them. But that doesn't make you any more a child of God if you eat turkey, turkey burgers, salad, or ice cream. Okay, let's move on to the next study. We'll go into that more in detail. And if you have any notes on these studies, give me some chapters and verses on these. this first study to, to give me a point on how I can answer this. this. This thing might take a lot longer than I think it should. Next study. Is it okay for Christians to eat meat? Bethany Verrett. Biblical guidance is something that Christians hold in high esteem. They want to live according to God's precepts, under his guidance, and righteously. For varying reasons, some individuals have a crisis of conscience about the food they eat. <clears throat> Whether they wish to give up meat, eat in alignment with Jewish customs or other personal decisions, they want to know what the Bible says about godly behavior, including whether or not meat is okay to eat. Should people take a life if they don't have to? Does the Levitical law apply to the church? Was man even meant to consume flesh in the first place? The Bible does address these questions, though sometimes it is indirectly. Let's see if she does this properly, chapter and verse. Though humanity may not have eaten meat, 
in the Garden of Eden. The fall changed everything, and man's ability to have a relationship with God was altered. To be clean before God, they had to be clean physically as well. But the blood of Jesus cleanses man thoroughly. Man's relationship with God changed his relationship with me. Um, I'm just going to get my ice back here. <clears throat> Swam a lot of yards today. Now, a couple of things that bring to mind right off the bat, but I'm not going to go into it too deeply right now. I have to think about it. She says, but the blood of Jesus cleanses man thoroughly. What does that mean? So, all mankind, including Adolf Hitler, they're cleansed. Don't think so. How do you get cleansed? Personally. A moment of faith alone and Christ alone for forgiveness of sins. Acts chapter uh, 2, 38. Repent. From change your mind from not believing to believing. For forgiveness of sins. And be baptized thereafter, one at a time, to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So man's relationship with God changed his relationship with me. Um, that's vague too. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. Men weren't there except Adam and Eve. They sinned in the garden. They were changed. They were changed into something quite different than the perfect man and woman who were open to choose to obey or not obey that one command, either the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So man's relationship with God, yes, it changed his relationship to meat with meat. No, the meat didn't do it. God changed man into something different than perfect. Flawed, sin nature. And every descendant of Adam and Eve changed. Therein, though, for a period of time, they were vegetarian, it appears. We'll look at that. Thereafter, especially after the flood, there were changes in the way animal, the animal life, and also before, uh, viewed and related to man. What the relationship with God of man is. Um, you have to be more specific. Adam and Eve changed. God gave them provision for eternal life by informing them that through the seed of the woman, the miraculous seed of the woman by the, by the Holy Spirit, there'll be a faith in him and their relationship will be restored in the sense that they'll now uh, they'll die, but they won't they won't uh, be completely out of relationship with God, provided they believe. That's the gospel. You just can't make a statement like this. There's too much complexity involved in it. Did Adam and Eve eat meat in the garden? In the beginning, God put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. They lived in innocence, naked, cultivating the earth. Actually, I don't recall them cultivating the earth. Didn't they just eat whatever they wanted in the garden except for that one tree? They spent time walking with their creator. They had an abundance of food to eat with only one plant they could not consume. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in that day you shall eat of it, you shall surely die. That happened. They were eternal. But die, you shall die. So they, they died uh, spiritually the moment they ate of it. And then they would die, and they did, physically. But they will re re uh, be uh, restored to their former selves, I suppose, um, because they both evidently believed in the Messiah, Savior, Christ, the seed of the woman, on down through the generations of humanity, not too long from there, maybe uh, 
6,000 years, less than 6,000 years ago. These two verses reveal a lot about the diet of the first man and woman. They could eat any fruit or vegetable except that which grew on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Death had not entered the world either because man had not permitted them to eat animals. Um, because God had not permitted them to eat animals. I, I, she's making it up as she's going. There's nothing specific about, I don't permit you to eat animals. I think built in the first man and woman, they had a choice. The only thing they couldn't choose to do is eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I don't think it had even occurred to them. So you can't say God had not permitted the like there was some specific command, but don't eat any of the animals. Because she goes on and explains, and they would not have thought to take the life of an animal and consume it. Maybe they were built in the point, but they just wouldn't. They did not eat meat in the garden. So you have to, you can't start editorializing, even the minor little things. After sin entered the world, death did as well. After they ate the fruit, Adam and Eve realized they were naked, the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which resulted in the first recorded instance of an animal dying to support human life. Recorded. God evidently killed an animal to provide clothing or animal skins for them to wear. It didn't support human life. It was just a, a, a covering to signify something. To signify that they were going to have an eternity in heaven despite what they did in the garden because they trusted in the seed of the woman to make provision for that eternal life by making provision for their sins. And the Lord God made Adam and for his wife garments of sins and clothed them. So he clothed them, but they didn't support life. See, you add that you'd subtlety in there. The Bible remained silent about what people ate before between the fall and the flood. Once the waters receded, God clarified what people could eat. The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the field and upon every bird of the heavens, upon everything that creeps on the ground and all the fish of the sea. Into your hand they are delivered. Every moving thing that lie, lives shall be food for you. And, I, and as I gave you the green plants, I gave you everything. Now, a thought comes to my mind here. If they eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, being in charge of the entire life forms on the earth, they, if they did that, they would change, and so would all the life forms. Now that all the life forms will not only be at enmity with God, but they will have uh, carnivores and plant eaters. One will eat the other, and they will fight with one another. There'll be, there, will, there was complete harmony of the, of the whole world there until Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. And that changed, according to God's sovereignty, everything. So the animal life was murderous of one another for food, for territory, for whatever. So you have to bring that into the information. Every moving thing that shall live shall be food for you. And as I gave you the green plants, I gave you everything. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. Genesis 9, 2-4. Whether people ate meat before the flood and God was clarifying this was allowed, or whether they had not and God was permitting it, is not clear. The, the point, this point is that God formally approves the consumption of meat, except that which was still saturated with blood. Um, yeah, I'll take Genesis 9, 2-4. All right, let's take a look at what she says that verse says. Genesis 9, 2-4. You have to be a detective. I, something sounds wrong there. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. The fear of you and the terror of you will be on every beast of the earth and on every bird of the sky, with everything that creeps on the ground and all the fish of the sea into your hand. They are given. Every moving thing that is alive shall be food for you. I gave all to you as I gave the green plant. Only you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. 